welcome to yet another Bible study. Today I have invited Pastor Samuel to teach us on a very important subject, how to keep your faith during these challenging times. Before I can invite him, I wish to encourage you to send to us your remarks, comments and questions on the book of Ephesians. It could be what we have already covered or not covered. A number appears on the screen. Please send to us your WhatsApp messages stating your remarks, comments and questions. In the subsequent Bible studies on the book of Ephesians, we will attempt to answer them. Now, help me as we invite Pastor Samuel. It's a privilege this morning to bring the Word of God to us in our respective home, and we want to appreciate God for that. I trust that as we journey along in the service, the Lord himself will touch our life and will bless us tremendously in the name of Jesus. I'd like for us to offer a moment of prayer as we go into today's um, message. Father, we thank you for the privilege to hear from you this morning. We ask that you will open our spiritual ears, O oh God, that we might understand your word. And Father, you will cause us above all things to do that which you shall be revealing to us today. Because it's not just the hearers, O oh God, that are blessed, but the doers. So Lord, we receive grace this day to hear and to do that which you will be speaking to us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Once again, you're welcome for the uh, service this morning. Um, today, I've come to speak to us on how to keep our faith alive in these challenging times. How to keep our faith alive in these challenging times. The will of God for us in these last days is that we keep our faith functional with respect to our work with him, that is, our relationship with him. Uh, with respect to doing his work, that's our service for him, and also with respect to our obtaining or having our needs met, the provision, and finally, with respect to enforcing and maintaining our victory in Christ over sin, over Satan, over self or the flesh, over the world, over sickness, and over diseases. God's will for us still stands today, and it is that we keep our faith alive. All the promises that God has given us in the Word of God, they still remain, and they are still very much valid, and they are still for us to claim. But if we are going to be able to claim them, we need faith. Everything happening around us right now has the potential of killing our faith. But the will of God still stands. The Word of God reveals in Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Third John verse 2 tells us, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Also, we see in uh, John chapter 10, in verse 10, the latter part of it, 10b, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Finally, we see again in Romans uh, 1, verse 17, For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Notwithstanding all we are facing right now, God is speaking to you and to me that it will require our faith to be able to appropriate all the good things he has for us. However, according to John chapter 10, verse 10a, we read that the thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Also, in 1 Peter 5, verses 8 to 9, we are told, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same suffering are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. And in Luke 22, verse 31 to 32, we find Jesus saying to Peter and consequently to us, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you 
that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. Mark what Jesus prayed for. He prayed that the faith of Peter should not fail. He did not stop the devil from doing what he wanted to do. But he focused on Peter that his faith would not fail. Now, the same thing God is speaking to us right now. The enemies are busy with their stuff. But that is not the concern of God. The concern of God is that our faith would not fail. So, so, so today... On the one hand, we see that God wants to prosper us. And Jesus has come to give us everything that pertains to life and to godliness and that in abundance. On the other hand, we see the devil and his courts are out to have us and sift us like we through the various happenings. To steal from us, to kill us, or to destroy us. However, Jesus' desire still remains for us that we keep our faith alive and we should not allow it to fail. Now, in order to participate in what Jesus has, uh, uh, has come to offer us, there are things we must do. Our participation requires, therefore, that we resist the devil and remain steadfast in the faith. That is why today, by the grace of God, we are going to look at just some few things we must do this end times in order to keep our life af uh, 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 alive, our faith alive and to obtain our inheritance in Christ. The first point I have noted here is that we must understand we, uh, the times we are living in and the events that mark these times. The events that mark this time. The Word of God tells us in, that we are in the last days. 1 Timothy 4 verse 1 says, Now, the Spirit speaks expressly that in later times, mark that, in later times, we are in later times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Second Timothy 3, 1 to 5, we read, But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedience to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power, and from search, turn away." In Luke chapter 21, in verse 26, men's heart failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven will be shaken. In Ephesians 5, in verse 15 to 20, we read, Be careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days... Mark that, are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Mark that, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God from the uh, to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we see that we are in the last days. And all the events marked in scriptures, uh, especially where we read in Ephesians, are already happening to us, are already happening around us. First John 5, 4 tells us, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. That's good news, irrespective of what is happening, irrespective of the times we are living in. The Bible says that um, we have overcome the world, and see what overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. This means that we have overcome this event, but it's our faith that will cause the victory to be a reality. Lack of understanding this truth will cause us to be caught off guard like it happened in the days of Noah. Brethren, you need to understand the times we are living in if your faith will remain alive. Secondly, I have, uh, 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 what we must do is we must be in constant and robust fellowship with the Holy Spirit. I cannot overemphasize this point. 
fellowship with the Holy Spirit. It is so important because uh, uh, the Bible tells us in Zacharias in chapter 4 in verse 6, it says, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18, where we read earlier, we were told there, to not get drunk on wine, but instead be filled with the Spirit. You see, it's important to understand that your power the, is resident in the Spirit. You need to understand that it is the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of the living God, that will empower you, you know, to be able to keep your faith alive and respond to God the way you should at this time. Uh, 2 Corinthians 13, 14 says, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Now, I want to pick that aspect of the communion of the Spirit because it's so important. Now, the, the, the Greek word translated communion is koinonia. It's koinonia. And it has five um, meanings. It means communion or fellowship. It means distribution. It means transportation. It means Unity. We have communion. We have transportation. We have unity. Now, let me quickly explain what each is about. Communion. Communion. Communion there, of course, talks about talking with the Holy Spirit. Talking with the Holy Spirit in order for us to know him intimately. The second one, which I did not mention, uh, sorry, is partnership. We partner with the Holy Spirit to carry out our day-to-day -day activities and our living. Also, uh, distribution. We receive the distribution of the, the Spirit's gift for effective and productive service for God and the brethren. Another thing here is uh, the transportation. That talks about spiritual encounters. That talks about, you know, as we spend time in prayer, God begins to reveal things to us. And we begin to have, you know, experiences outside of this realm. And that is very, very awesome. Because when you are in touch with, you know, the, the realm of God, your faith remains active. And finally, uh, uh, to achieve oneness with him in unity. In unity, such that we respond to his leadings and his impulses and his urges much more easily. We cannot overemphasize the issue of communion with the Holy Ghost. We need to take it very, very seriously. So I'm going to uh, 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 further talk about this aspect. Now, prayer is a vital part of fellowship with the Holy Spirit. We must pray like never before in this day since our faith is going to remain alive. Remember that Jesus prayed for Peter so that his faith will not fail. So if our faith will not fail, if it's going to remain alive, we need to pray. Hence, we must pray very, very seriously. We, we, we read in Romans chapter 8 and verse 26 that likewise the Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses, in our inabilities. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought to, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17 says to pray without ceasing. And Matthew chapter 26 verse 41 says, watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. The Holy Spirit is the one that will quicken our flesh according to Romans 8, 11, and help us in prayer. We must pray. For when we pray, we prevail over the enemy. When we pray, we overcome the challenges of life. When we pray, our faith will remain alive. The advantage of prayer cannot be exhaustively covered in this message. And this is all a part of our fellowship with the Holy Spirit. This is all a part of the Holy Spirit. Another part is the Word of God. We need to keep the Word of God alive in us. We need the Word of God to help us in no small way during this period. If we are going to keep our faith alive, remember that faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. So we will need to read the Word of God. We will need to study the Word of God. We will need to meditate on the Word of God. Please remember this. Uh, for any creation to occur, 
there has to be an interaction between the Holy Spirit and the Word. So when we take time to read the Word of God and study and meditate on it, uh, fellowshipping with Him becomes, you know, much more easy. You know, it, it becomes better. So it is important that we, we consider also the Word of God. Uh, as a part of fellowship, I'd like to drop this before I move uh, to the last point. Ephesians um, 6, 17 says... Um, the word of God is the sword of the spirit. The Holy Spirit is also called the author of the Bible in 2 Peter 1, 20-21 and 2 Timothy 3, 16. It is through the word of God we can get to know the attributes of the Holy Spirit, the way he works, and much more. So, we need to read, we need to study, we need to uh, 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 meditate on the word of God. Amen. Also, still as a part of fellowship, we need to take time to praise during this period. It is not all activities. You, you, you need to take time, quality time to praise God. And uh, you know, when it comes to praising God, there is no hard and fast rule about it. You, any time it comes from within. And, and, and when we fellowship with the Holy Spirit, praising God becomes natural. Praising God becomes something that flows out of us. It's not something that is cast in a particular, you know, uh, setting. No, it's an, a natural outflow of our um, fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Praises and thanksgiving must be our second nature. It must be our second nature. We must flow in it daily to keep a robust and living faith in these last days. As we fellowship with the Holy Spirit, praise become a natural consequence and outflow and outflow. Amen. The last point I want to talk about here is we must maintain an excellent fellowship with the brethren during this time. Hebrews chapter 10 in verse 25 tells us, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as is the manner of some, but exalting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Ephesians 5.19, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in our heart to the Lord. Psalm 133, verse 1 to 3, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head, running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron, running down on the edge of his garment. It is like the dew of Amen. During this time, you can't afford to cut off yourself from the brethren. Acts chapter 2 verse 42 tells us that the brethren, they were together and they continued steadfastly in apostles' doctrine or teaching and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. We cannot neglect fellowshipping with the brethren if we intend to stay above all challenges in this present time. Remember, two are always better than one, and a threefold cord cannot be easily broken, as found in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9. Beloved brethren, it is important to fellowship with other children of God. It will keep your uh, 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 faith alive. It is said that iron sharpens iron. So you will need the help of the other believers. Uh, finally, we must put on the whole armor of God. We must put on the whole armor of God. Ephesians chapter 6, 11 to 18 tells us that uh, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against power, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having guarded your ways with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having your feet, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you'll be able to quench all the fairy darts of the wicked one. This text, this text that I've just read captures all I've been saying. We will do well to obey it in the name of Jesus. In conclusion, let us consider the words of the preacher in Ecclesiastes chapter 1. It says, uh, cast your bread upon the waters. 
for you will find it after many days. Uh, what I'm trying to say is this. All these things we have said, you will need to keep doing them. Because as you are doing them, you are sowing. You are sowing. You are sowing into your spirit. And of course, at the appointed time, you begin to reap the reward. One of the things that will happen to you is that your faith will remain strong. And irrespective of what the enemy is trying to throw at you, you will stand strong. Having said all this, if you are here with us and you know you are listening and you are yet to give your life to Christ, you don't have any faith in God. But Jesus has also made a provision for that. He died for you so that you can have faith in him because it's your faith that will take you through this time. So if you are there and you want to give your life to Christ, I'd like you to pray this prayer with me. Father, I come to you today as a sinner, and I believe that Jesus Christ died for me. And I confess now that he is my Lord and my Savior. I receive your spirit. I receive your forgiveness. I receive your spirit right now. Wash me with your blood and make me your child in Jesus' name. Thank you, and God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you very much, Pastor Samuel, for that encouraging Bible study. Please, brethren, as I have said, send to us your remarks, comments, and questions on the book of Ephesians. A number will appear on the screen. Before we start in our subsequent Bible studies on the book of Ephesians, we will attempt to answer them. You may remain anonymous if you wish. God richly bless you.